People claim that I'm a cheater, unfaithful, and a liar, and it's all true. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I am here to review the season 15 premiere, episode one of The Real Headbutting Housewives of Atlanta. We start the season off with a flash forward of Sonya's husband, Ross's birthday party. We see the entire cast from last season, they're all back, so they're all walking in in slow motion one by one. Then we see Sheree and her new man that I think only she's claiming. I don't know if he knows that he's in a relationship with Sheree. <laughs> But she looks happy, so they're walking in. Next thing you know, we see that infamous scene of one of the new women on the show, Courtney, getting into it with Candy. Candy's yelling at her like, I'm about to headbutt this bitch. Then we see Kenya. She's getting into it with Sheree's new man that only she's claiming. Kenya is yelling at him, telling him that he's unfaithful, that he cheated on his ex-wife, and he's probably going to cheat on Sheree as well. But probably not until season 16. Sheree, she jumps in front of him trying to protect him like, no, leave him alone, leave him alone. This is my man. He's faithful now. Don't believe the rumors. I I love him and before the chaos could continue we see on the screen four days earlier and we flash back the episode four days ago and now we're at Chateau she's getting played by Martel Sheree's house somebody's knocking on the door Sheree goes to answer it and who is it the one and only Martel Holt Sheree's no man so I don't really know much about Martel besides he's unfaithful he's trash he's terrible he's toxic he's community dick and he got his mistress pregnant but for the most part I don't really know much about him <laughs> And he's on another show called Love and Marriage Huntsville. I've never watched, but from what I do know about the show, it's nothing good coming from him. All I hear is that he had an ex-wife called Melody and he treated her terribly. And I think that he still is. And he cheated on her multiple times, allegedly. So this is definitely up Sheree's alley. This is definitely a step up. <laughs> So he walks into her house dressed as if he just finished filming the latest James Bond movie. You know, the movie that he's in, James Bond, double O, unfaithful. <laughs> and if this was his first time on TV and we never knew who he was or his history with his last marriage or his unfaithful ways, you would think that him and Sheree, they're a pretty good looking couple. So that's unfortunate. Sheree, she's already trying to soften the blow in the confessional by giving us a brief rundown of what she thinks that Martel is in her head. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, he's amazing. He's great. He's on a different show. You know, she couldn't wait to say that. He's on a different show. And you know, people have all these, you know, allegations on him that he's this, that, and the third, but he treats me nicely. Of course he's going to treat you nicely. That's how it usually starts at the beginning. He's going to try to woo you so you can fall in love with him. He's going to take you out to the malls, the dinners, the movies. That's when he's going to start sprinkling in the unfaithfulness. That's when he's not going to want to go out in public with you. He's going to want to stay at the Chateau all day. We all know why, because he doesn't want to take the chance of both of you running into somebody that he's messing around with behind your back. Then he's going to start texting you, oh, I have a meeting till four in the morning at work. Don't wait up for me. You're pacing back and forth in your room looking at the phone like, wait a minute, a meeting till four in the morning? And then poof, you're Drew Sedora. Trust me, Sheree. I've seen this story many times before. Not for me, but trust me. I've seen it many times before. <laughs> But hopefully that's not the case because I don't think that this relationship is real. I feel like it's a TV relationship and it's only to benefit both of them on their own proper show to have a storyline. But I can definitely see Sheree falling in love with Martel on accident. <laughs> with the Carrie Hilson saying that one song, this wasn't supposed to happen to me. Sometimes love knocks you down. <laughs> Sheree, please don't do it. Like, and I'm not going to say that Martel, you know, he's always going to be a cheater because, you know, people always say that you can change. But, you know, for me personally, I feel like, you know, no. <laughs> then Sheree tells him, oh, go get changed. Go get changed. I have a surprise for you. I'm like, what, Sheree? He already knows the layout of the chateau. He has clothes at your house already. Like, wow, she moves fast. But OK, so then Martel, he goes to go get changed and he starts taking off his shirt and, um, I was pretty conflicted about this because I was watching this scene from two different aspects. One being, hmm, look at him thinking I'm gonna fall for this just because he's taking off his clothes. He wants more camera time. This is pathetic and desperate. Ooh, but look at that chest though. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I can't believe the way he treated Melody on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Like he should be ashamed of himself. That unfaithful mother. Ooh, but look at those arms. I mean, you know, wow, I mean, you know, and the whole time I just kept thinking, I mean, I know that he supposedly he's an alleged cheater, but I mean, you know, maybe every now and then he, he should, you know, get a couple of passes. <laughs> 
I am just, just, just joking around. I am just playing with that. I do not stand with cheating or none of that, allegedly. But then again, like I said before recently in one of my videos, I used to be a mistress, so I don't really have much to talk about Martel. <laughs> And then Sheree in the confessional, the producer asked her, how's your sex life with him? And I'm like, wait a minute, why do you want to know? Do you want to fuck him? Are you fucking him? Should I know something here? <laughs> but Sheree, she tells her, oh, everything is good between us. He has big dick energy. So then they pan over to Martel. He's putting on his pants. And for a second, I thought I was watching a 3D movie. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, you see the outline of his print on his boxers and, you know, I, I just kept thinking the whole time. Did they get that in one angle, in one shot? Or did they have to, like, tell Martel, okay, Martel, this isn't working. Sheree, can you come in here for a second? Just squeeze it a couple of times <laughs> until they got the right shot. But eventually, he gets ready, he comes out. And the whole time, I kept thinking, too, could you imagine if his ex-wife, Melody, was a friend of the show? Or a peach holder with Sheree, like, they could rotate peaches every other episode. One episode we have Sheree, the next episode we have Melody, and so on, all the way up to the reunion where they finally reunite face to face. It would have been interesting to watch, but he comes out, Sheree, she has this surprise ready for him. This woman, she's knocking at the door, she comes in. Martel is thinking that they're about to have some type of threesome, so he tells Sheree, oh, she's just here to cook for us? Oh, I'm disappointed. I thought it was going to be a bigger surprise. And I'm like, Martel, like, if I was the lady that came in to cook for them, I would have told them, um, I'm just here to make dinner. That's it. <laughs> you know, dessert is extra. <laughs> But, you know, Jere goes on to say, oh, you know, I never had a threesome, but my ex-husband did. And, you know, honestly, I don't know how I feel about that because, you know, if I was in that situation and I see the other two going at it and I'm just sitting here like, well, what, what about me? Where's my attention? I'm going to get an attitude. <laughs> I'm going to throw a fit and I'm going to curse both of them out and leave. So I don't think I could do that. I'm too territorial. So, you know, the lady, she starts cooking for them. They're sitting down. Sheree starts telling them, oh, we have a birthday party from Sonya's husband, Ross, later on that we need to attend. And, you know, Candy and Todd, they're going to be there. He's not feeling them too much because Candy was on an interview, you know, kind of being shady towards Martel saying that he's an opportunist. And I mean, he's on the show, right? So... <laughs> She's halfway right. Martella is like, it's so funny that she calls me an opportunist when look at her husband. And I mean, that's been an ongoing thing about Todd from the very beginning that he's an opportunist. He's with Candy for her money, for a better lifestyle. And I mean, at this point, we could kind of put that to rest because I don't think that he's with Candy for those reasons. I'm pretty sure he has proven that he has his own thing going on, even without Candy. So Sheree tells him, well, you know, I think that they're going to be respectful when dealing with you at the party. Martell is like, oh, well, they better be. Aren't they both like 5'3"? <laughs> And then already with the shady producers, they put a little clip, a little picture of Candy and Todd standing next to each other. Todd is like 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, Candy, she's 5'3". And then at the very bottom, they put with high heels on. <laughs> Candy, she had to go on Twitter so quickly to correct everybody. Like, oh, by the way, Todd, he's not 5'6". He's actually 5'9". <laughs> Okay, Candy. We then see the return of Candy and she's meeting up with Don Juan and Carmen to talk about their next business move together. Don Juan asked her, so have you talked to Sheree? What's going on with that? Candy tells him, no, I haven't really talked to Sheree like that. So then Don Juan was just like, oh, she hasn't really sold anything on her website. <laughs> Now, Don Juan, I suggest you watch it because she has Martel now, so just be careful. But, you know, they start talking about the whole website situation and how it crashed the very first time that Sheree put it live. And I remember I wanted to support her so badly, like the She by Sheree. I wanted to get a shirt, maybe a nice jogger suit or whatever. But then I saw those prices and I'm like, Sheree, you know, I, I love you from a distance. <laughs> Then we see Sheree in the confessional that anybody will feel blessed having so many people come to their website and crash it because it was in such high demand. And I mean, if she believes that, then that's the story that we're going with. But if anybody brought any She by Sheree merch, let me know how your experience went down in the comments. Candy, she also gives her input in the confessional by saying, I mean, I tried to help Sheree with her website, but she didn't want any help. And honestly, I wouldn't trust Sheree as a business partner. And you know, Sheree, I said it last year in one of my reviews, you should have teamed up with Candy. You know, Candy being the business person that she is, you could have had a collab, you could have sold joggers, you know, get two joggers get a free dildo from the candy factory but no you messed that up and i don't even know how she how she actually how she's actually doing with sales 
hopefully it's good because some of the pieces were cute. It's just a little too expensive. But, you know, then that's when Don Juan, he asked Candy. So, you know, the, the Candy Factory is coming back, but how are we going to do that with time management? What's that going to be like? Candy, she's a little worried because her son Ace, who's six, he's been telling her, mm, I want mommy, I want mommy. And, you know, that's also been an ongoing thing with Candy and her family, specifically with her kids, for years now. Candy, she goes on to say, uh, I mean, you know, Ace, he's been wanting my attention nonstop, and I just don't know what to do anymore. And, you know, this is... This is a very sticky situation because Candy, I love that she's a businesswoman. I love that she's about money, 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 money. But it's just like, you know, and, and I don't want to say that, you know, enough money is not enough, I guess. But Candy, she, she has so much money. You know, she has enough money where she could just kind of sit back and be with her kids. We all know that Riley, her, her older daughter, had told her years ago, oh, I don't think that you should have another kid because you're not going to have time for us. And... Look, it's playing out the way that she predicted it back then. So, but at the same time, you know, Candy has goals. She has dreams. She has businesses. She's She has a whole checklist of things that she wants to be. A EGOT winner. I think I'm saying that right, right? <laughs> a EGOT, E-G-O-T, whatever. She wants to be that, right? So, and I wouldn't want Ace to grow up to have some type of resentment towards Candy for not being there for him when he needed her when he was younger. But, you know, Candy figured that out because then Kenya Moore, she pops up. <laughs> She shows up and, you know, I really, really, I miss all, I miss the entire cast, but Kenya, I miss her the most. I'm like, oh, she's back. <laughs> she gets a slow motion entrance of her getting out her car with the high heel boots, the ponytail. She just looks beautiful, right? She's like, okay, Don Juan and Carmen, you two have, you know, you made your little segment. Now be gone. <laughs> She sits down and, you know, it was just so nice to see her for once. And then we see the queen of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Moneta. They start catching up with each other and Candy had a slight issue with Moneta simply because Moneta was in the middle of both Marlo and Candy's issues last season, but not doing anything maliciously. She was just kind of playing both sides, but now they're good again. Moneta's husband also had a party recently that Kenya attended. Candy couldn't go, so she asked Kenya, Um, so wait a minute, Kenya. I couldn't go, but did you come with anybody to the party? So then Kenya, she was just like, um, you know, I didn't come with anybody, but I mean... I came and I'm like, ooh, Kenya, <laughs> you kinky girl. <laughs> But supposedly, Moneta at the party, she introduced Kenya to this man named Roy. From what we saw, the little selfie that they took on the couch, he looks cute, you know, and Kenya, she feels like she's activated again. She feels like a woman and, you know, she feels happy and, you know, hopefully the whole thing with Mark and her, it gets finalized at one point. I don't think that, you know, he signed any papers, but hopefully she could finally let him go in the past. Kenya, she flips it over to Candy like, oh, so what's going on with you? What's been happening with you? And I'm like, wait a minute, do they not talk outside of the show? <laughs> Like, this is the first time that they're all hearing about this, but Candy, she starts talking about her spoofs that she did on Sheree and everything, and I personally didn't think that they were funny at all. They were pretty cringe, but I did find it very impressive how Candy, she had all the outfits that, you know, at the reunion and everything for her little skits, and that was very impressive how she managed to do all of that. And now Sheree's upset about it, and Sheree, this is where you messed up, because you should have came out with your own skits on Candy, Todd, Mama Joyce even. We all know that you have the Mama Joyce wig in the closet from seasons ago. So you could have brought that out and, you know, made your own spoofs on Candy. You know, play the same petty game as her, but you're upset about it. And currently, as of now, if you go on Twitter, she's currently having an issue with uh, KFC. <laughs> Sheree is going back and forth on with KFC on Twitter because she tagged KFC and said, oh, you know, maybe I should have brought a bucket of KFC chicken to Candy. That's the only apology that she accepts or whatever. KFC, they actually replied to Sheree and said, oh, we have lemonade too since you're thirsty. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Since when is KMC, you know, in the Housewives universe? And then Sheree, she just responded and she said, oh, well, I'm actually more of a big, a bigger fan of Popeyes. <laughs> I'm like, Sheree, you really need to get it together. Get it together by the reunion because this is not looking good in your favor so far, but... They also mentioned how Sheree is dating Martel, but how Martel has a history of cheating and is probably still currently cheating, allegedly. <laughs> 
And Kenya, then she drops the bomb on everybody by saying, well, he actually slid into my DMs on Instagram. And, you know, I believe it. I do. But at the same time, Kenya was the same person who was so supportive of Sheree and Martel's relationship at last year's reunion. So I want to know the timeline of when he messaged her. Was it before or after the reunion? And I also want to know why she dislikes Martel all of a sudden and confronts him at the party and says, oh, well, you cheated on your ex-wife. So you're probably going to cheat on Sheree as well. Like, did she just find out about his past now? Because then I could believe it. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like she must have known or had a clue of who Martel was at last year's reunion. And obviously she was okay with it. But now it's a problem. But I don't know. I guess we'll find out later on. So she tries to open up the message that he slid into her DMs with. And it's not there. He deleted it. Hmm. Very, very slick, Martel. But not slick enough. <laughs> So she tries to open it, it's not there. And I wonder from Martel's perspective, were you also trying to get onto this show for some reason? Are you trying to be the new Peter? <laughs> Just looking for any way to get onto these shows. Like first it was Kenya, that didn't work. So you moved on to Sheree. She's gullible enough, so she said yes, and now you're here. But what's gonna happen when that doesn't work out? You're gonna move on to Kim Zosiak? <laughs> I can see it happening too, especially with what's going on with her currently. Did you all hear that Kim Zosia, she's finally getting a divorce from her broke ass husband? I'm very, very shocked about it because I really thought that they were going to just stick it out together to the very end, but I guess not. You know, I can already picture it now too. Kim is in bed right now. She's going through her contact list like, huh, let me look for Big Papa's number. Oh, there he is. Hey, Big Head, do you miss me? I miss you too. Maybe we should catch up. <laughs> I can just see her already at Andy's house. Like, Andy, please, I need to be on season 16 of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Look, I finally have a storyline. I promise I'll go on the cast trips. <laughs> Would you all be down to see Kim come back for next season? Let me know. But Candy, she also lets us know that her and Todd are having issues again because of time management. He wants to produce a movie, but he wants Candy to write for him. But she doesn't really have time for it. So as she's explaining that, she's getting worked up and getting emotional. She tells them, Well, Todd is trying to produce a movie and he wants me to do the writing, but I just don't have the time for it at all. And I, I don't know. I just feel like Todd is making me the problem. And, you know, all I really need is understanding. But he doesn't want to meet me halfway. Oh. And, you know, she gets choked up about that. And, you know, it's just, that's also been another issue, an ongoing issue between both of them. And I don't even know, I don't know the solution to that because, you know, Todd, he's doing his own thing. And, you know, Candy's doing his her own thing. And it's just, they both have goals. And if she cuts back on her time, then that's stopping her dreams. But then if he does the same thing to help her, and it's just, I don't know, Candy, Candy, you need to figure this out. <laughs> We then head over to Sonya's house and it's officially her second season back and she already has merch out. Her husband Ross is wearing one of her new sweaters that says bop 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 on it. Something that she constantly said last season. So I'm looking at Sheree like, Sheree, what, what was the problem? <laughs> Sonya got this done within one or two seasons, yet it took you like 50 years to get She by Sheree out of the grave and onto a website. Like, it's possible, obviously, but Sonya, she still has 1,200 people living in her house. It's her, her husband, Roz, their son, Deuce, her mom and dad, her sister, Shari, Shari's husband, Tyrell, their kids, the kids' friends across the street, the neighbors next door, the local mayor, I think Ashley Darby's friend, Deborah, she was in there, Kim Possible, Jamal Bryant, Lisa Rinna, Lisa Wu from first season of Atlanta Housewives. I think I saw Clifford the Big Red Dog in there as well. It's just a whole big party, right? Sonya tells Ross that she's going all out for his 40th birthday party and the theme is going to be Harlem Nights. She also lets us know that it's not going to be the same thing as it was last year when she threw Sheree's party and honestly you should have just kept that to yourself because I completely forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that selfie thing that she had going on and it didn't spin around. <laughs> oh Sonya, you know she tried. You know she had some food and a couple of balloons that were deflated but she tried. That's what counts, right? <laughs> But then I believe her entire family, they surround them and they start talking. There was a couple, there was some tension in the room. I'm like, what's going on? What's happening? Is somebody about to swing? <laughs> But they start, no, she starts asking Tyrell, which is Shari's husband. She's like, oh, so how does it feel being my assistant? So she hired him as an assistant because he was having some trouble trying to break into the whole real estate agency or whatever. So she was just like, well, you know, to make some money, I'm going to hire you, et cetera, et cetera. And then... 
this whole conversation just rubbed me the wrong way because he told her, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's a lot because, you know, you want to do a podcast, you want to do a movie, you want to run around the house and blah, blah, blah. And it's just a lot. And I'm like, is that, hold on, is that, is that ungratefulness that I'm hearing? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Because that's what I'm hearing. Like, he sounds like he's just whining and complaining. Like, would you rather not have any money at all? Like, is that, that could be an option too. Like, that is crazy. And then Shari, her sister, so disrespectful. She was just like, uh, you know what? Honestly, Sonia, I just feel like you're very inconsiderate about other people's time. And I'm like, inconsiderate? Inconsiderate? She has you, your husband, who has no job, and your kids living underneath her house. Like, if I was Sonia, I would have been like, oh, inconsiderate? Okay, uh, make sure that you pack my inconsiderate in your bags. I want you out by tonight. <laughs> like, absolutely not. I would have been like, you get the fuck out. You get the fuck out. Mom, I love you too, but get the fuck out too. <laughs> like, it's just so disrespectful the way that they were coming at her. So Shari continued by telling Sonya, you know, you're really inconsiderate about my children as well. You always want to take them out at the wrong time when I want to get them inside to eat dinner. And then I look like the bad guy because a dingbat like you, you're inconsiderate about other people's lives and other people's time. And I'm like, dingbat? <laughs> First of all, your mother's a ding bad, and yes, we have the same mother, but regardless. <laughs> like, who are you talking to in my house? Well, technically, our house. <laughs> like, that is crazy. Shari felt so bold. Maybe she's trying to get a peach or get her sister's peach because all of a sudden she has a confessional, and I'm like, who is she again? <laughs> they just give confessionals to anybody at this point, but you know, and Sonya, she's just sitting there just taking it like, Oh, okay. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll do better. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm so sorry. Ross. He's already up. Uh, he's. Uh, he's upstairs. <laughs> he's like, this is not my issue. I'm leaving you. Goodbye. But that was just so so disrespectful of uh, you know of them just coming at her like that. And Sonya, again, this is the issue with mixing family and friends like this because they are not going to respect you if they're your employees. They're going to look at you like, uh, you're trying to lay down the law to me. You're trying to give me the rules to do and things to do. No, you're my sister. I don't have to take you serious because you're not going to fire me. You're still going to pay me regardless. I don't know. If I was Sonya, I will fire everybody and tell them, uh, you have until maybe season 16, maybe season 17 at most, if I still have my peach, to get the fuck out. <laughs> We also see the return of Marlo. So we head over to her house and Michael and William, her nephews, they're surprisingly there. So they're there. They're getting some food ready for Marlo to surprise her. Marlo's coming down the stairs as if she didn't come down the stairs like 10 seconds earlier to make sure that the scene looked right. <laughs> but okay, she could act surprised. She's coming down like, oh my God, w wait a minute. What did you guys do? Oh my God, you guys are so nice. You guys are surprising your Monty with some food. I can't believe this. Michael and William, I love you guys. I can't believe this. Come over here. Give your auntie some hug. Um, thank you so much. Let's eat something right now before Miss Sherry gets here. So they have a nice, loving, touching moment between all three of them. You know, we catch up with them. Marlo, she lets us know that, you know, she's still, you know, going through this whole parenting thing that her sister, when she got out of jail last season, she didn't really talk to her or her kids and that's really sad to hear because I really thought after that heartbreaking conversation on the phone last season maybe something would have changed for the better you know now but I guess not but you know now she has a life coach and you know I feel like that's a step in progress but I just like I said before I feel like maybe she should have hired a therapist and a life coach you know like double duty you know because a life coach you know I guess they could only just say but so much a therapist they could go something deeper but Miss Sharon is the life coach she comes on over they start doing some activities and this is where Miss Sharon lost me a little bit because she tells Marlo it's completely okay that you kick them out the house and I know that Miss Sharon means well and maybe she sees things from a different perspective but I don't know I just feel like there could have been a different way to approach that whole situation last season instead of kicking them out the way Marlo did I get it it was a lot but again there could have been a different approach to it especially how Marlo just dumped them over to her sister who already had kids in her house that she was taking care of and now she has more stress to be on on top of her so but they continued on learning how to express themselves and their emotions and i love what marlo said in the confessional which by the way shout out to marlo's confessionals i love those big hoop earrings that she had on they look so huge but they look cool and the other look that she had on the maroon lace outfit that she had on she looked really nice in both but marlo she goes on to say i'm navigating this 
whole parenting thing because I never had it when I was younger. When I was younger, my mom used to tell me, it's this and this and that's that. I couldn't say anything back to her. I would have to go upstairs to my room and leave it at that. And I agree with that because I feel like parents, they look at their children like, uh, you're a child. You're always going to be wrong. I'm an adult. I know what's right. This is my house. This is my rules. If you don't like it, you could go somewhere else. Knowing that they can't really go anywhere else. So they just have to go along with whatever you tell them. And they can never express themselves properly because you're always going to come down at them like, oh, stop, you're doing this wrong, blah, blah, blah. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm right, right, right. And I just feel like it should be a two-way street. And I love that Marlo is learning that with her nephews. We head back over to Chateau Martel and Sheree's having Sonya over. She comes in and she notices the pink two-piece set that Sheree has on. She looks so good in it, by the way. It's an exclusive She by Sheree two-piece set. It looks really cute. And then they put the price next to it, $274. I'm like, damn, it's not that damn cute. <laughs> But she does look good in it. But both her and Sonya, they're ready to work out. Sonya has her workout clothes. They're in the gym area. They're working out. Sonya is telling her about her issues. Like, oh, I just got into it with my sister about this whole, you know, job issue and blah, blah, blah. You know what we just talked about. And, you know, it's very simple, Sonya. Just fire them and kick them the fuck out. I mean, take some lessons from Marlo last season. <laughs> and then we get another knock at the door. This is where it gets a little interesting because then we have a friend of, the new friend of the show, which I don't know why they didn't just give her a peach. They're very stingy with the peaches nowadays. <laughs> But we are introduced to Courtney. You know, Courtney comes in. She's being introduced as Sheree's friend. So that right there, we should have known that she's coming on with some bullshit. <laughs> but she looks nice, though, in her thigh-high boots. Her and Sheree, they didn't really say how long they've been friends together for, but they know each other because they're children. They went to school together. And according to Sheree, Courtney, she's amazing. She's the best. She's like everything, right? But then again, Sheree also thinks that Martell is amazing. <laughs> So what does that say about you? But okay, but she comes in. She notices that both Sonya and Sheree are working out. So she also starts squatting in her thigh high boots. But she made sure to have every single camera on her. She wasn't going to injure her back just for free. <laughs> so she tells them, oh, give me one second. I'm about to do a squat too. Wait, hold on. Make sure the cameras are on me. I'm trying to get a peach this season. Okay, one, two, three. Uh, oh my God, I'm so crazy. Look, oh my God, I'm dipping again. Oh, look, look. I can do it just like both of you. Did you get the footage? Did you get the footage? Make sure that you send that to Andy because I want to get a peach and hold it in the middle. <laughs> and look, she's just a friend of. So now she has a sprained back for nothing. <laughs> but they sit down to have some champagne. We get to know her just a little bit by, you know, she does marketing and she also has a jewelry line. And they ask her, oh, so what's going on with you? Who do you know in the group? And she says that she hung out with Marlo. Second red flag. <laughs> she also knows of Candy, but she has an issue with Candy. And I'm like... <sighs> Okay, let's see what she has to say. So she explains to them, yeah, I've been hearing about Candy going around asking about me and who I am and what I'm doing and who I'm doing and what do I do. And I just think it's weird because she's this superstar that's global. She's worldwide. So I don't get why she's searching me up on Instagram trying to get to know who I am. I don't know you. You don't know me. So mind your business and stick to your own world. And I'm like... Like Courtney, 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 come over here. Come, Courtney, come over here already. The first episode, and I don't even know you like that. And we have to have a sit down. Come over here, get closer. Courtney, Courtney, cut it out. <laughs> Like, what's with these housewives coming onto the housewife shows with the most pettiest excuses to try to argue with somebody? Like, if you're going to come on that way, I want something dramatic, like something big, something like a huge bomb that's going to just, you know, shake up everybody. Like, come on and say, oh, well, you know what? I actually slept with her husband, Todd, two weeks ago. <laughs> like something dramatic. You know, that's that's not true, by the way. <laughs> But don't give us this high school BS because then it just shows that you're desperate for something. You're desperate for conflict for no reason. But, you know, I will say, though, Courtney, she's not like Fatoum from last season. So that's good. You know, I feel like with Courtney, there's potential. You know, I know that there's the first episode and she did come on doing a little bit too much later on. But I feel like there's potential with her, maybe. <laughs> And then Sheree, she has to give her two cents in like, oh, yeah, I also have an issue with Candy, you know, with her spoofs and everything. I just don't like that. And then in the confessional, she goes on to say, oh, well, you know, Candy, the only time that she doesn't have my name in her mouth is when she's eating or when she's sucking dick. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Sonya also wants to feel a part of something. So she tells them, oh, yeah, Drew. 
Ugh, I, I, I can't stand Drew. And I'm like, Sonya, please don't drag out that issue that you had. It was a one-way issue with you and Drew from last season to this season because that will be your downfall and you will not be making it back to next season. <laughs> Because your sister is this close to snatching your peach with that argument earlier in your house. <laughs> so we get to Ross's 40th birthday party and Sonya claims that she spent $100,000 on the whole entire party. And I get it, Sonya, that you're trying to prove something after the party that you threw for Sheree last season was a flop. But it was never that serious. <laughs> Like $100,000? That is crazy. Greg borrowed $10,000 <laughs> in my nini voice. But for me personally, I'll be happy with a nice pineapple cake, two balloons, and a couple of gifts, and that's that. But that's just me. So everybody starts arriving one by one, including her ungrateful sister and ungrateful husband that she's married to. Hmm. I would have had security outside like, yeah, don't let them in. <laughs> They, they screamed at me earlier, but Kenya, she looks the best, of course. I love her look, her dress, her bob cut, the fur that she had on with the little feather on top. Everything about the look was right. Marlo, she's second best look. I love her look, and I love how dramatic Marlo is. She gets out the truck like, okay, time to head in. <laughs> as if the big ass camera isn't in her face. And Mo we have Moneta, Candy, Todd, everybody's there, right? They're all getting there one by one. And I believe Kenya, she had a friend there. I believe her name was Akila. She was supposedly rumored, allegedly, unless I'm making this up. <laughs> She was supposedly trying out to be a friend of or a peach holder, but I see why she flopped because she was literally like a mannequin the entire scene, like, But she looked nice though, so I give her that. So then we see Bonnie and Clyde, Sheree and Martel. They show up, everybody's looking at them like, what? She actually brought him, she brought him, what? I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm like, of course, that's her storyline. Where is she gonna leave him, at home? No, she's gonna bring him. So Sheree also looks nice, Martel, he actually looks good too. So Candy, she starts whispering over to Kenya like, Oh my God, can you believe that? She actually brought him. I can't believe this. Well, I actually heard a couple of things about Martel. So then Moneta, Candy, and Kenya, they start gossiping about him, about how supposedly, you know, Martel, he's already cheating on Sheree, allegedly, and he's been talking to people here and there, there and here. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. Okay, so then Courtney, she pops up with her bobblehead. <laughs> She pops up and she also looks nice and, you know, she's already ready. She's like, okay, this is my performance. This is where I'm, this is where I'm gonna prove to Andy Cohen if I deserve a peach or not. Where's Candy? Meanwhile, I was very shocked that Marlo was underneath the radar that entire night, even though she did let us know, oh, I'm not looking forward to seeing anybody tonight, so I'm just gonna mind my business and try to win some money. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is a new side to Marlo. Okay, whatever. So Kenya and Candy, they continue talking about Martel and Sheree until they bump into them. Sheree greets Candy. Candy's greets her. It's very awkward. You could tell that there's some tension between them. Martel is just standing there like, yep, I know you all read about me on Twitter. <laughs> and Kenya, Kenya is just smirking the entire time because she knows that she's about to cause some mess. And then in the confessional, she says that Sheree should have her own spinoff show called Watch Me Date These Dumb Dudes of Atlanta. <laughs> Wait, but I need to be on season two or at least put me on the New Jersey spinoff. <laughs> That was cute. So eventually her and Moneta, they take Sheree away. They're like, oh, come on, come on. Let's go hang out over there. Candy gets left by herself. So then we see Sonya and Ross make their grand entrance. I love what Ross was wearing. I love the jacket with the white hat. I love the whole look. Sonya, she also looked good. Meanwhile, Marlo, we knew that Marlo couldn't stay underneath the radar for too long because she runs into Courtney. She tells Courtney, so Courtney, wait a minute, because Sonya, she told me the other day that supposedly you have an issue with Candy. What's that? about so then Courtney starts telling her that she doesn't know why Candy is trying to claim that she knows her and that they're friends or whatever and I'm like Courtney you should feel embarrassed that you're even spreading this around like stop it <laughs> Eventually, Candy, she runs into Courtney and Sonya. Marlo, she makes an exit. <laughs> but she still sticks around close enough to at least hear what's going on. So Courtney, she tells, this is where she starts with Candy, you know, bopping her head and bopping her chest at Candy. She was just like, oh, hey, Candy, how are you? What's, what's going on? What's, what's happening? <laughs> So, you know, it's so funny because I heard that, you know, you told a couple of people or whatever that you know me, that we're friends. And I told them, oh, no, 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 I don't really know Candy like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, 
Calm down, Courtney. The cameras are not going anywhere. They're still on you. Relax. Candy, she tells Courtney, Um, so wait a minute. Hold on. Because I never said that I knew you. I saw you in a picture with Dina, somebody who I knew. And then I said, oh, okay, I know Dina. I don't know who you are. I never claimed to know you or that we're friends. So then Courtney, she was just like, oh, yeah, I know. I know that. I know. I get it. But, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, I never said that we were friends. You know, I never want to claim you as a friend because I don't really need friends like that. And I'm like, Courtney. Courtney, again, relax. <laughs> What's in that damn champagne that Sonya had? <laughs> Candy also mentioned on her YouTube channel, her speak on this segment, that she genuinely did not understand why Courtney was coming at her like this in the first place when she had no idea who Courtney was to begin with. And she keeps trying to explain to Courtney, like, look, I know who Dina is, who knows you, who knows me, but I don't know who you are and I never claimed to be your friend or to know you or search you up. Courtney, she's not having that. So then Candy tells her, um, excuse me. So wait a minute. What's with this energy? What's going on right now? And then did you all notice Todd? <laughs> Todd slowly started sneaking up behind Candy. He was just like, yeah, I've been there before at the pillow talk with Candy. I know how things could get. <laughs> He slowly got behind her just in case because Courtney, Courtney was just doing way too much, especially that bopping back and forth. She was feeling very bold because Candy, I mean, I would have gave her one bop before I had to push her back because you're not going to bop your head back and forth like that. And it was that very last bop that pushed Candy over the edge because Courtney was just like, oh, well, I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm not a cloud chaser. That's it. Oh, the last one, as soon as she would have done a mush. <laughs> But Candy, she was just like, yeah, but you keep bouncing on me for no reason. You need to stop bouncing on me. Courtney, this is when she loses control. She tells Candy, well, you need to calm the fuck down. And I'm like, Courtney, you obviously never saw season six of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. <laughs> because you're messing with the wrong person. Meanwhile, Marlo, did you all see Marlo? She's also sneaking by, like, trying to listen to what's going on right, be right behind Courtney. <laughs> As if we don't see her. And she's so dramatic. She's just drinking her drink like... <laughs> Candy finally had enough of Courtney, so she tells her, I never said that you were a cloud chaser. I never said that. You said that, Courtney. I never claimed that you were a cloud chaser. The second that Courtney told Candy to calm the F down, Candy went the F off. <laughs> And she tells Courtney, uh, first of all, bitch. And then Sonya, she jumps in the middle to try to block, you know, Courtney from getting beat up. <laughs> she tries to push Courtney back, but Courtney kept trying to get at Candy. So Candy said, I'm about to headbutt this bitch. <laughs> That's what we're doing now, Candy. We're headbutting people. I mean, I don't know. That feels like it will hurt. <laughs> so that was that. And then we flash over to uh, Sheree and uh, Moneta and Kenya. Kenya, she finally tells Sheree, Sheree, I need to tell you about what's going on with Martel. So supposedly he's been seen around other people in Atlanta. He's been cheating on you, allegedly. So then Sheree was just like, uh, is she here right now? <laughs> Kenya was just like, um, uh, no, I don't think so. She, she's not here right now. So then Sheree was just like, okay, so it doesn't matter. You know, I'm a Ferrari. And I'm like, a Ferrari? I mean, more like a Honda Civic, but okay, a Ferrari. <laughs> I'm just playing Sheree. I love you. <laughs> So then she was just like, oh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Those are just rumors. It's whatever. I don't really care about that. Moneta, you know, she's also trying to get her peach, her peach juice or whatever. And then eventually Sheree was just like, you know what, Kenya? You know, instead of, you know, telling me this, why don't you tell Martel and we could clear this up? So then Martel, he's, you know, sitting across the room, you know, waiting for his cue. So then Sheree, she was so sexy with it. She tells uh, Martel. Over here. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> So then Martel, eventually he's making his way over. Kenya, she's about to get up. And then that's where the episode ends. It ends on a to be continued. <laughs> this whole party was a hot mess. I hope Ross had a good time regardless, though. He looked nice. <laughs> but that was the premiere of The Real Housewives of Atlanta season 15. It was an interesting premiere. Uh, you know what? It didn't even feel like a premiere. It felt like something that happens in the middle of the season, like a party or whatever, or like a big event that, you know, leads up to the finale. But it was a good episode. It was nice to see everybody back. And I'm curious to see what Courtney brings this season. Even though she was doing a little bit too much this episode, I'm still invested. So let me know what you all thought about her, the whole entire cast. Oh, by the way, speaking of, what happened to Drew? <laughs> I completely forgot that Drew wasn't there. Oh, yeah, Ralph. He showed up. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So this review is not over. <laughs> Ralph, he showed up and he looked nice. And oh, my God, Ralph, like, 
the nerve, the audacity. He tells Kenya, oh yeah, I showed up, but Drew, she's at home. She's not feeling good. Her family's going through a crisis right now. Her dad, you know, I'm not sure what's going on with him, but I have to support Ross. <laughs> I'm like, that is terrible, Ralph. That is terrible. Now I see what leads to divorce later on this season. But, you know, the fact that I didn't even notice that Drew wasn't there. And I wonder if she's still getting paid the same way because she technically wasn't in the whole episode. Not even a confessional. We got Ralph. So, I mean... Again, with that being said, let me know what you all thought about this whole entire premiere down in the comments. And also, one more thing. I think I'm going to be reviewing the new show season two of College Hill, Celebrity Edition. It has an interesting cast. It has Tiffany New York Pollard. That's the queen of the reality TV. It has Jocelyn Hernandez, the Puerto Rican princess. Amber Rose, Ray J, and other cast members that are interesting. So I think I'm going to be reviewing that. So let me know if you watched that show and what you think about that. And just let me know what you thought about this whole entire premiere down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.